Hey there guys, how's it going? Jack Shreve here and we're back in Fallout 4 and we're just doing a quick tour here. So, Sin City Boy 97 he's uh, put a challenge out there, he came and put it in the comments on one of my videos uh, to try and get us involved and it's something I was definitely interested in. Now it was to build round, the only rule to it was to build round the... Um, the hatch that goes down into the bunker at the back of the sanctuary behind one of the houses in sanctuary now one of the mods that i've got installed i don't know whether it's scrap everything or uso i can't see it being uso it must be scrap everything has allowed me to move it so i've brought it down here down by the river you'll see i've put all these trees around and my thought to this uh, was that the the resident at the um, old sanctuary back before the great war he put a bunker down by the river and it's completely surrounded in um like block walls and then from there when the, him and his family have gone down into the bunker radiation has seeped in they've now been ghoulified um and then since coming out of the bunker they've started building a little community out around the outside the bunker's still there in case they need to go in but they have like a little fortified area where seven of them now live so i put all the bushes down here all these trees obviously were placed by me um We've got some plants and shrubberies and all the different things going all the way through as we head down here um, to hide it from this back end. Anyone going through the houses or looting or anything trying to find uh, like food or anything like that while, while rooting through the houses hopefully shouldn't see down here. And from this front end it's the main point of defence. So they have this walkway coming down the front here on the night time. It's all very dark. You can see the light off one of the uh, the members of the, the community has got power armour. So they've got the light on at the front there. So we head down this path. This is the only way in and out. We've got the river running on the front end with the guard, Minuteman guard. Obviously since the Minutemen have got back up on their feet, they've got a couple of people here helping out. And the bunker isn't used so much anymore. Um, it's more just as a last line of defence. You can send out a radio signal. Um, the Minutemen will come to help and then they can lock themselves in the bunker downstairs. So there's this area here, um, which is the main front gate. With a little uh, area of land out the front. Here there's our guy with the Minutemen power armour. Stood out the front, guarding, laser rifle in hand. Laser musket, sorry. Got some barrels and different things for light out the front. I tried to keep the light on the outside quite dim, um, so that it wasn't drawing too much attention. Uh, and then inside's more always better lit but we'll see that i'm kind of going to alternate between the day and the nighttime tours our minimum guard up here he's just got a cup of coffee and a radio and a little lantern for on an evening and then when you head up here through the uh the gate here we'll have a little look back so at the top there we've got the main man up there, we'll go see him in a minute, the original ghoul that originally lived here and it was his bunker. He guards up on the top with his sniper rifle. Um, so we'll head in here, we've got a little uh, desk area. This area is for um, this lady here, she's another guard, but she just, you know, they do a lot of the planning here. This, this place isn't too big, so they've got a little desk there keeping the radio signals up um, with the other settlements. And then she's got a bed there at the back as well, so she can more or less constantly be on duty. Um, if she's ever needed, even on the night time, all I have to do is wake her up. Got all the paperwork piled up there at the back. I've tried to use the metal uh, pieces a lot more in this one. Again, a lot of them come from the USO with the different, uh, different shades of green, um, red, silver um, on the metal. I quite like the patina on them. Some of them in there, like the blue, I think it's too blue. It's too harsh. So these were the original um, brick walls that they all had up. And then they've uh, put this here as well, which is like um, a junk fence gate with the metal door in there to add an extra line of defence. Um, I can't remember if we have a look in there now. I think we do. So we open it up. And that's where our hatch is. So they have to break through this door and through the hatch door um, to give them... And it, obviously the wall, they'd probably have to take down this wall as well to try and actually get something in there to actually break that door up. It limits the amount of people that can get around that door to try and force it open. Which, um, because obviously it's only a, 
a basement hatch rather than actual secure bunker door so i wanted to give them something a little bit more secure and again on the night time the inside nice and bright the outside try to keep it nice and dark um, and not draw too much attention we'll sweep right the way around this is just off the top of the uh, generator room and then we'll head down the steps into this little area here so what we've got is we've got a little generator room we've got two small generators going do give off a little bit of noise they could do with something a little bit more quietly but hey ho they do with what they can got a little seat here and some tools for working on the generators a little table for anything that I need to pull out and there's the other generator there on the table on the other side quite well lit in here again obviously if they're going to be working on the generators then we've got the water source they've got a water purifier here dipped into the river all around the outside is protected um, apart from the river is only shallow here so what we're able to do is we are to put the um, the wooden supports down um, and it'll be quite hard for someone to be able to swim through through all the posts to actually get to here but the fish can still swim through um, we've got the farmers the two farmers they uh, sleep down here so they've got their little area there and what they'll do on the night time is they'll fish off into that part of the water um, and on the outside the I like to think the birds there's quite a lot of birds around here but obviously the uh, blackbirds um, I like to think that the fish tended to in the pond when I was younger in my granddad's pond the fish used to always hide under the rocks from the birds so you'd never ever see them they'd always be under the rocks keeping they keeping out of the way so as you can see there the fish can get all in here and now what I was thinking was as the birds are all flying around the fish will be underneath this um, this decking area using this as a natural cover there's nowhere down the river where the rocks actually cover the water so it's a natural bit of cover protection for them however if we've then got on the inside someone fishing the fish are very close in which to be lured to the bait so uh, the fishing goes quite well in this free flowing river right here and they've got some guns and different things that they uh, and ammunition and different things that they've been storing up on the side can't quite fit anything else in that bunker downstairs um, I also quite like that with the um, fire extinguisher holding that gate open the gates always open because the settlers just open it up so I put that fire extinguisher there as if it's being propped open makes a little bit more sense I don't tend to put doors in things because I get really annoyed when they're always open but I am trying to put them in a little bit more and I'll probably do things like that to try and make them look like they're actually meant to be open you know um, so this is it from uh, on the roof on the tarpaulin roof across the top of the fishing area and we'll go down and where the water is and what they've got is I've got loads of barrels here and buckets where they store up all the water and they can take it to different points in the settlement so maybe they can take the buckets out and they can go feed the plants out the back which we will go see the crop area in a little bit um, or they can take it up to the runes um, and they can use it up there for drinking or for whatever they need it for so yeah we'll go back around through here a couple of machine guns out there on the side assault rifles head round and where we'll go next is up to the um, maintenance area we've got the machine gun turret on the top there inside it's trolley I thought it was quite fitting as if they'd made it themselves I know it's quite raidery but um, I, f I figured the settlers would do it as well quite like how that wall ended up uh, just placing its way straight through there using a few more options on the uh, the fence in there with the um, rolled uh, steel and then we've got all our workbenches down here so this is like a little workshop area we've got the chemistry station we've got the uh, armor workbench there tools set out all over the place bits of uh, glue and tape and all the different things that they might need for repairing then we've also got the chemistry station where they've been making a few chems already uh, but just to keep on top of the actual what the needs for the settlement now they aren't really selling anything here they haven't got any shops they're just their own little uh, their own little community in which they all just uh, try and help out each other everything they create is really for themselves maybe they'll trade a couple of things when going over to diamond city or one of the bigger settlements so that's what we've got there for the chemistry station now we'll have a look at the little power armor area they haven't managed to kit out this power armor yet that's why there's no one uh, wearing it obviously the guy on the front 
has the full working power armor all the pieces that they've found so far but they've got a few mods and different things there ready to go once they get some of them uh some of them extra body pieces for the power armor we've also got um petrol oil and paint and everything they might need while they're doing the uh, the power armor up there So we'll back up out of here and this is now our farm area. So we've got corn, we've got tails, we've got um, mute fruit and we've got carrots all out here. Um, quite a bit of fruit, uh, quite a bit of uh, fruit or veg, which is good for them. They can uh, if I have a varied diet. A lot of the time I used to put in just mute fruit over and over again, mute fruit, mute fruit. You know the filter fills up quite, quite nicely with the uh, mute fruit. You can you also use it as a decoration around the settlement. But I think it's quite nice to have a varied little area as well. Kind of like in the corner over at uh, Convent. Obviously it's very varied, the different fruit and stuff they've got down there. So at a night time, there's just a little bit of light out here, mainly off flaming barrels. There's a couple of lights dotted about here and now. I've tried to place them so they're not visible from the outside. Um, so we'll head back downstairs now and then we'll head... This was like a little area that you could have uh, defended off. I actually didn't turn around. And look out towards the old sanctuary because we could see through the trees although on the other side we saw you couldn't really see through the trees to actually see the settlement from this side because the trees are so close you get quite good sight lines through it and I, I do wish I'd showed that off but oh well we head up here we've got another Minuteman guard he's looking over the uh, the back end of the settlement looking over the farm area making sure no one's trying to scale them walls and then we head down in here and this is like the Minutemen sleeping area so all four of them sleep in here all the all four guards they've got some pictures on the wall they've got the Minuteman flag up and then they've got some letters and stuff they've been writing back to the main settlement as the Minutemen will do rotation um obviously there's the main group of settlers that actually live here and then the Minutemen who guard the place will do rotation and spend time with their families and things like that so they've got a little area here where they can have a drink, play some cards maybe, chill out. And they've brought one of them buckets of water up so they can grab drinks on the evening and different things like that. Got some vodka out on the side there. We'll take a little look at it at the night time. Quite well lit in here. This is one of the places that does give it away. I mean we've got that big open window on the front end. But I didn't want it to be all completely boxed in on this level. So I think that worked out quite nicely anyway. Then we head up these last set of stairs here. We've got the um, machine gun turret over the top there. Um, and then up here we've got a little the radio tower for bringing people in. If they don't stay at this settlement and expand it, they can uh, go to further through the Minutemen Empire. Obviously we've got that big Spectacle Island build. Um, that Actually, that's the next one coming up. And this is the main man himself, the original ghoul, the guy who built the bunker. And although it stopped the radiation enough to stop it killing him, it did stop him becoming a ghoul, sadly. But that does mean he's still here. Uh, there's pros and cons to it, I guess. There's that machine gun turret down there. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go back down the front and over. And then we're going to have a little look at the defences along the front end of the uh, actual settlement. So I've really enjoyed this. The next one coming up is my some of the actual um, communications area for my settlement over on Spectacle Island. It's coming in four parts. So we've already oh sorry, one, two, three, four. It's five parts, Lawrence. So we had the first one, which was the nomad build, the guy who lives at the back of the island by himself um, and has a little farm area. Then we had the docks. Next we've got the communications area. Then we've got the main town. And then we've got the farm, the main farming area up at the top of the uh, at top of the island. So they're all to come. Um, this is obviously it from the front uh, along the walkway area. I haven't bothered to wall off that. They've just got the uh, the walkway there. If anyone gets under that, they're not going to get in anywhere. We've got the walls behind it, and then round this main area, it's the uh, all the junk fences and all the metal walls. And again, the fish are able to get all under there. And if you look at the, on a night time nice and dark again like i was saying that Minutemen area up on the top is really the most most light coming through and also that where the um there's a door on there with the obviously the bottom of it railed off making it into a window chain link across so that people can shoot out of there should we be needing it um you do get um mongrel dogs are really what the main thing that comes over from this side um 
have seen Super Mutants at one point, but uh, it wasn't on this playthrough. I haven't seen them for a long, long time. I actually think they attacked the red, rocket, the red rocket from this direction. Anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, why not subscribe? I'd really appreciate it. Help me grow the channel. Otherwise, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one, which should be coming um, in about three or four days, hopefully once I've just finalised the, uh, the voiceover for it. All right, guys, thank you. Bye-bye.